Hi everyone, my name is Ashok and this is a screencast for Drupal Camp LA 2011 on typography and Drupal. Because I was giving the when I was giving the session during the during the camp and Camtasia crashed, I am re-recording uh, whatever I can from the from what I had presented at the camp. So there won't be any questions that will be getting answered, though I will try and recall some of them at the end of this uh, screencast and say what my answers were. And if there are any questions, just feel free to tweet uh, the questions to me at btmash. So, um, as I mentioned, my name is Ashok, and I'm a systems analyst for the California Institute of the Arts. And I'm doing this session because nice fonts make me smile. And uh, regarding this presentation, I will be going through some module demonstrations since the contributed area in Drupal.org does make things easier. However, if you are proficient at Drupal and understand how to do things at the theme layer, um, go right ahead and do that because it is a little bit more efficient to do custom work directly at the theme layer and integrate whatever kind of fonts you want to directly as opposed to enabling a module which ultimately is trying to be more flexible than it is uh, necessarily efficient. And even though I say it here well, regarding jumping in, uh, like I said, just uh, to tweet back to me at btmash and Hopefully I'll be able to answer some of your questions from there, or if you have something interesting to share, then I can figure out another place to put this, perhaps on the camp page itself. So as we're going through this presentation, um, the last time when I presented this, not at the camp, but before, I'd gone through a whole list of different types of modules. And in the case of this presentation, I'm really only going to focus on four modules and they're going to be using two different types of text replacement as opposed to the four that I covered the first time. So instead of covering flash-based text replacement or JavaScript-based text replacement, which really aren't being used all that much, I'll focus on image-based text replacement, which is primarily handled by the Kufon module, and I will be covering um, using font face methods, using the Google Fonts module, um, which is very popular using the web font loader API module which I wrote and while it is not popular it is quite flexible and the font your face module which is very popular and also very flexible I will also say uh, some of the places that you can get some nice free fonts and along with uh, subscription based font uh, providers and just any file and go over a couple of the questions that were asked during the presentation. So let's get right into it. Uh, as I mentioned, we'll start with image based text replacement. And the nice thing about this method is that there are no issues with a flash blocker, um, like using a flash based text replacement. Uh, I had presented a long time ago to the Drupal community about using. Uh, interesting fonts on your website and I had the pleasure of showing what it would be like to use flash based text replacement on uh, using a projector with a browser that had adblock enabled and the font would not show up it was completely blocked so image based text replacement is good in that sense so you won't have to worry about it another thing that you will not have to worry about is our licensing issues uh, when you're using something like Fontface, the the end user has the ability to explicitly copy the the font types uh, onto onto their computer and to be able to use it for themselves. And additionally, if you're using some other font, there may be licenses that are associated with it. Uh, when you're using an image-based text replacement, the end result that the user is getting are images. So there is very little to worry about. And 
Even though I'm really only covering one option during this demonstration, there are a few sets of modules out there. And uh, as I mentioned, I'll be covering Kufon primarily because it is the most popular. And even though the Drupal 6 version is no longer supported, the Drupal 7 version is, and both versions of the module are fairly stable. Um, there's also the text image module, which would be your second best option, but the last time it was updated was well over a year ago. And the other three options are quite outdated at this point, so I would really stick with Kufon or text image. So there are a few things that you have to do when you are actually going to be using the Kufon module. First is, aside from you download it, and secondly, there is an external Kufon JavaScript library that you need to download. And I provided all of the links in a Google shortener, and some of them can get quite long. Third, what you do is, based off a font that you have on your, on your computer, you would generate a font definition at the link uh, provided there. And then you would move the JavaScript file to sites, all libraries, slash Kufon fonts or add it to your theme. And similarly, you move the font definition to sites, all libraries, Kufon. So let's give it a shot. That was just some lorem ipsum text that I was using. And first thing I'll do, I've already download the, downloaded the module, so let me just enable that. So let's find Kufon. So it is now enabled and ready to go. Once the page has reloaded, I go into the configure into the administration pages and I should now see Kufon settings. What I would do from this point is it tells me to add in selector because it has already detected that I have two fonts. However, I need still want to be able to add additional fonts. So let's create a new one. I would first go and find the font that I'm going to use. In this case, I'm going to use a font called Chunk 5, which is a very heavy set font. And I will go to that link that I provided, which helps you generate a font definition. So let's go there. I'm going to upload it. In the case for um, for Kufon and on their site, you can also upload additional typefaces so you can have them all in one package. But we'll just use one for this case. And we'll call it chunk5. It is an open source font and it allows web embedding so I will agree to the EULA. It is in base Latin so I will leave that alone although if you're using a Cyrillic alphabet you could also check those off if you needed to and its limit can be on any domain it doesn't really matter in this case since it is open source. So I acknowledge and accept these terms and let's go ahead so it's going to generate the font file. You can actually take a look at it in JavaScript. Since it is a JavaScript file, you could take a look at it in a text editor as well. Although I don't know how useful it would be in such a scenario. And what we will do is move it into one of the directories. Topography demos, sites, all, libraries, Kufon. Oh, sorry, Kufon fonts. And that's where I'm going to put in my chunk 5 file. So now if I go back to my page and refresh it, and I want to add a selector, it is now in there. So let's add the selector 
for all of the headers on my site. So we will have it for h1, h2, h3, h4, h5, and h6. And let's make it enabled and save the configuration. So now when I take a look at these fonts on my site, they should hopefully get enabled. They did not in this case, so let's take a look again and see what happened. It seems I forgot to enable the actual font itself. So let's select chunk 5 again, save the configuration, and now if the page reloads, you can see that it is now in fact using the new font. One thing to note though about using the image-based text replacement, you cannot actually select the text. So if I go and try and highlight it or I want to try and copy and paste it into something else, it is not actually possible. And secondly, when you look at the actual font, you will see that it actually creates a canvas element for this text. So at this point, what is happening is when you try and look at this text through a screen reader, a lot of screen readers actually do not have the ability to read through uh, canvas elements. So some of this text might be illegible to an actual screen reader. So if you have a lot of disabled people coming to your site, it might not be the best decision to use a module like this. So please keep that in mind. Now let's return back and take a look at some of the font face based options. And I would highly recommend going with the font face route because it is quickly becoming the standard. And the main reason for this is that the text remains as text on the page. You're really defining all of this using CSS and it's going to take a look at font files that way and just simply replace what that text looks like, not actually changing what kind of markup comes around it or anything like that. There are some licensing issues surrounding FontFace, but I think the benefits far outweigh some of the cons. And like I mentioned before, there are many, many services that are offering free, beautiful fonts for your usage on the web, so it's a good idea to take advantage of it. The other downside would be that currently you need to create many different font formats to actually show a font face on your site. So if you're using um, Internet Explorer, um, anything that's IE4 and above, you need to create an embedded open type file, and that's what's supported by uh, Internet Explorer. If you're using Safari, uh, Firefox, that's more than that's past uh, 3.5. Opera or Chrome, um, they all support the open, uh, the open type font and the true type font files. If you're using um, iOS, which is less than 4.1, like on the older iPod Touches or in Opera, those only support uh, those support F SVG. And a new contender that is quickly becoming the type being used by nearly all new browsers would be WOFF or web open uh, open font format. It's uh, it's quickly picking up pay, uh, picking up steam mainly because you can actually attach licenses to the fonts uh, directly and so they can be used by other sites and they can be restricted to specific domains and um, you get the gist. One thing you'll have to think about is that browsers load the font in different ways. So some browsers will show the plain text until the font has downloaded onto, into the user's computer and then show the new font. So some of your users may experience what's called a flash of unstyled text. 
and in other browsers such as Safari and uh, Internet Explorer, the text will be hidden. So people will see uh, what looks like text is missing on the site and then once the font has actually been downloaded then they will see the actual text. So people may experience inconsistent behaviors across different browsers. So it's just something to keep in mind. But now as we go into the various types of modules that are out there, uh, one of my favorites is the Google Font Directory. And the sheer reason that I like it is that you enable it and you're ready to go. So let me show you what it looks like. I'll go into modules. I'm first going to turn off Kufon and I'm going to enable the Google Fonts module. Save the configuration. Okay, let's go into the configuration section. Let's see. There's Google Fonts. So I haven't enabled any fonts yet. And let's save the configuration so it'll actually start showing the options. So once I open this, you will see a huge range of options that are offered by the Google Font directory. And just so you know, Google Fonts are a collection of open source fonts that you can use on your site that um, Google has uh, been slowly making available over the year, over the past year and a half. Uh, it started off with approximately 30 fonts and the list has quickly grown to well over 300. So there are tons and tons of really nice fonts to choose from. So Let's say we are going to choose Cedarville for our headers and I would like to choose Dawning of a New Day potentially for, or sorry, Delish, Delius Swash Caps for the rest of the text on my site. So let's save the configuration. and it lets me know what I would use underneath it to actually use the font. So my h1, h2, h3, h4, h5, and h6 are all going to be font family of Cedarville cursive and my body Just say my body will be font family of Dalius Swash Caps. Hopefully that'll work with something on the site. Please, Dalius. Is swash caps, Cedarville cursive. Just want to make sure I got everything correct. And there we go. As you can see, it came through quite easily, and I have my two different fonts automatically showing up on the site. So, this only works with Google Fonts. That would be the downside. However, I would, as I said, there are hundreds of fonts that you can choose from their site, and given the type of module that it is, it and what it's designed for, it is quick and does what it needs to do very well. The second module that I'm going to go over is one that I wrote for the California Institute of the Arts, and it is the web font loader. And for those that don't know. Um, Google and Typekit joined together to initially create the Google Font Directory 
and as a part of this they released a a JavaScript based loader for these font files called web font loader and what it'll do is you provide it a series of fonts that you want loaded as part of the page and it will basically fire off different states for where the where the font loading is at so there's a state for when the font is inactive there's a state for when the font is fonts are loading and then finally there's a state for when the fonts have actually loaded and can be shown to the user so you can have different sets of behaviors occurring using simple CSS as it's going through these different states so what you end up with is a more consistent behavior that your users see uh, as they're browsing your site. So whether you're on Internet Explorer or Safari or Firefox or Opera or Chrome, you can have them all experience the flash of unstyled text so they still see the text until the font has loaded and then it switches over to the actual font. or you can have them all experience not seeing any fonts or text on the page until the font is loaded and then show it to them afterwards. So there is more setup work involved in getting some of this stuff set up um, because you do have to define what I'm calling font info files and then you have to have the style sheet that contains where to access those fonts themselves. But the module natively works with Typekit, Google Fonts, FontSlide, FontDeck, and what are called custom sources. And these custom sources really mean that you can use your own fonts um, to display content on your site. So in the case of CalArts, they have a graphic design program, and they have staff, uh, they have faculty and students that create fonts which they wanted to use on the Institute website. So this automatically works with those. So once you have all of these fonts, you essentially create font packages which contain all of this information along with the CSS files to reference. So let's take a look at what one of these looks like. Actually I'll show you two of them. One is for a custom font and the other is for a uh, Google font. But I should also let you know that you can intermix the two of them. So you could have some fonts coming directly from Google, or you could have, and you could have some of your own custom fonts or something from Typekit. So then you can mix and match from these various sources for your site. So let me open the project for my typography demos. And if I look at as an example, a Google font, I have something called dot font info, and they look very much like any module info file, except I'm ending these with font info, and that is for speed. So inside it, I provide the name, much like you would for a module info file, and then you start providing what kind of family it belongs to. So in the case of Google, uh, you would say Google Families. Um, and you want to be able to get the Joseph and Sand standard light font from this one. But if you wanted to, you could also put in a second one, like Google Families is equal to Cantorell. So then you can load multiple fonts at the same time. And then the render CSS is where it would contain actual rules for what's going to be shown on the page. So if I look at it, you'll see this thing called .wf active. And what that means is that the font is up and running on the site at this time. And in this case, all my header tags are the ones that are going to get the Joseph and Sand standard light font. And there's a second font file that I have defined in this case as well. Uh, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. But in this scenario, if it's inactive, the H1 is going to show the Arial font until it's been loaded onto the site. And if I look at the one for Batekna, you can see that I'm listing out all of the various variations of the fonts here. 
And just so you know, um, you can actually go to a site called Font Squirrel, which is accessible at fontsquirrel.com. You would basically upload a, a TTF or EOT or WAV file, and it would be, it would be able to render out for you various packages. Um, so it would give you the entire, uh, it would create all of the other font types for you along with a style sheet that it can access all of that information from. So in this case, this font's called Batecna, and I have three custom families. One is for the regular version of the font, one is for the bold version, and one for the italic version. And you, be, you also let it know where to find the definitions for these fonts. So in my case, I call it custom style CSS, and it'll be in stylesheet.css file. So if I look in there, you can see that it's basically just defining what the font face, uh, how to get access to the font face family. So I tell it what the font family is and where the sources are and what the font weight and style are for this as well. And then if I look at my render style sheet itself, you'll see that I have something for what happens when the font is loading. In this case, I'm hiding it from the user explicitly and for what happens when the font is active. So in this case, um, I turn the visibility back on. The regular version of the font is going to be in bold. And if it's strong, I'm going to put it in medium. And when I need italics, I put it in italics. But every other font on the site is going to be in Helvetica. So let's go and see what it all looks like. I'm going to go back to my modules page. Let's turn off the Google font directory. Here it is. And let's turn on the web font loader API. And if I go to appearance, you'll be able to see the web font loader settings. And in that list, as I mentioned, for any font info file that you uh, implement, you can then just say, it'll show up in this list and then choose what you want. So I'm going to choose Batecna. And you also optionally have the ability to cache the web font loader file locally. It'll make your site a little bit faster as a result. So I'm going to cache it and save the configuration. And as you can see, the font is up and running right away. So this is another really fast method to get fonts up and running on your site, or to have the font actually load on your site. Like I mentioned, it is a little bit slower, um, or it requires more planning, that's what I meant, but it is quite fast. And finally, the last method that I'm going to talk about is the font your face module. Um, this is a fantastic, fantastic module. It is much like the Google Web Font uh, module, an enable and go type of module. Um, it has a number of different providers that it works with, um, such as Typekit, Kernist, Font Squirrel, Google Fonts. And with the Drupal 6 version, there's the ability to upload custom fonts. Uh, the Drupal 7 version is still being ironed out, and it's almost there. But, like I said, it's, it's very close and really good. And I've also talked with the owner of the module, and we're planning to have some sort of integration between the web font loader and font your face uh, module at some point in the future. In his case, he does not provide any sort of um, states that you can attach um, different CSS rules to, whereas mine does. So we're going to try and have some sort of integration in between the two so that his module could be used with mine and be able to provide the JavaScript-based um, states to use. And let's jump right into a demo. So I'm going to go into my modules. Let's turn off the web font loader and enable font your face with 
let's say Kernest and Font Squirrel. So we're going to get fonts from services that are not Google Fonts now. And save the configuration. So right now we don't have any actual fonts showing up on the site, as always. So if you go into appearance, you should now see font your face. Uh, let's go to fonts to enable. Uh, when the first time around, it'll say that uh, no fonts have been imported from the various services and we need to import them. So let's run import and get some of these fonts. So as you can see, Font Squirrel has 524 free fonts that you can use on your site. And I believe Kernest has around 200, last I checked. Wow, I'm completely off. It's at 629 different fonts. Um, that is a ton of free fonts. So now that we have imported all of the various types of fonts. Let's go back to this page and browse on the different fonts to enable. So as you can see they'll all start showing up on the pages and I forgot to mention that this module actually requires views to get show up on your site. But the advantage with this is it'll actually let you filter down the immensely large number of fonts that show up and um, filter down to whichever fonts you had in mind or even filter down by the different types of fonts that you could potentially use on your site. So let's select I want to have I want to select something that's for display and I really like Archery Black so you can find out some details about it, like which provider it's coming from. And you can also preview what it would look like. And finally, you can decide what kind of selectors you want it to get applied on. So by default, um, it'll be on other, so you can define your own rules. But you can also define, it has some presets that you could use to try and use on any other text on your site. So in my case, I want this to be used against any header on the pages. So let's save the font settings. And there we go. Some of my headers are now using that new font. And for my text, I want to use the Furor font. So let's try and apply it to everything. And hopefully some of my font will end up that way. So going back to my home page not all of it has come through and part of this has to do with the fact that the font your face module does load in between um, along with the rest of the modules and their CSS and the final um, rendering CSS from your theme so you might actually need stronger rule sets to get it to show up on your site so let's take a look through again we can look at font your face. Pure is enabled. Um, let's try and put it just on standard text. Save the font settings. There we go. So now we have different sets of fonts showing up in different areas. And that's really it and as far as demos are concerned. Um, for places where you can get nice fonts, I've really found Kernest, Font Scroll, and Google Fonts to be excellent sources. Uh, like we just saw, Kernest has 629 different fonts that you can choose from for your site. Font Scroll has close to 500. I believe 524 was the last count. And Google Fonts is well over 300. So just with those numbers alone, you're talking about close to or more than 1,400 potential fonts that you could use on your site. Naturally, some of those are going to repeat between the various services, 
but again the point is that you have a lot of options that are freely available if none of those really work for you then you could try looking at subscription based formats uh, subscription based fonts to use on your site uh, most of these are relatively inexpensive uh, in the case of something like Typekit, I believe it's less than $20 a month. So if you have a relatively large site that's going to be serving a lot of fonts, um, that's going to be serving a lot of typography to your various users, uh, you can look at a subscription-based uh, option so that the fonts are offloaded to their services. Um, from the list, I believe Typekit is probably your best option because not only does it have um, a very extensive selection of fonts, it is also one of the fastest um, between the free and the subscription-based uh, set of providers. Uh, I've seen it on quite a few sites and you notice very little difference in terms of the speed of uh, coming up on the site. Uh, as the questions, as I was answering questions, there weren't any other suggestions that were given by users. Uh, like I said, if you find if if you're a place like CalArts, you could actually just have custom fonts on your site, such as in the case of our theater website. This is actually using a custom font that we have specifically for this website, uh, which we have uh, open sourced. And now that we're down to the questions, um, there was really only one major question that popped up, aside from what are some good font providers, which I showed in the previous slide. Um, and that question was, uh, which one is the best in terms of performance? And the answer that I gave is that uh, the Google font directory is quite fast. And along with the Web Font Loader API. Uh, between the two of them, the Web Font Loader API is probably a little bit faster as far as backend processing is concerned. However, since it is JavaScript based, um, it is going to be loading a bit more JavaScript onto your site. So, from that perspective, from the front end perspective, it may be slightly slower. Uh, again, it depends on the size of the font and everything as well though even in the case of that they're all going to be somewhat comparable. Uh, if I was going in my scenario I'm naturally going to be heavily biased towards the web font loader but the Google Fonts uh, module not the variant from Font Your Face but just strictly the Google Fonts module is uh, definitely among the faster ones that are in the list so that would be a one that would be one to check out. With that said, um, like I mentioned nearly at the beginning of the presentation, if you already have knowledge of programming in Drupal or creating themes in Drupal, it might be a good idea to actually just package these fonts up as part of your theme or even in your own smaller custom module, um, which might have other functionality going on with it for the site, as that would be faster than these modules that are trying to solve more general sort of, um, things regarding typography. Like in the case of the Google Fonts module, it's going to be loading all of the Google Fonts into your backend. In the case of the Web Font Loader, you are creating font info files. And in the case of the Font Your Face module, it's going to be downloading or loading um, all of these fonts from the different providers. So definitely give uh, the theming way a look through if, if performance is your main concern. Um, but in all of these cases, the, the load is not going to be all that big. And if you're interested in helping out with some of the typography projects, I strongly just recommend going to the pages or to the different projects that are there and looking at their issue queue or trying out the modules and seeing if there's something that could be included to try and make them better. Um, you can go to drupal.org slash project slash kufon for kufon, um, drupal.org slash project slash google fonts for the google fonts module, um, project slash font your face for the font your face module, and web font loader API for the web font loader module. 
and I hope this has been uh, useful to you and I hope that um, the other sessions that have been uploaded online for Drupal Camp LA uh, have been useful to you as well. Of all the ones that might be related, I would suggest taking a look at the Drupal Design Skills session. Uh, that might be the most useful, uh, that might be the most related um, presentation to this one, as it might show you some ideas on how you could load your phones uh, on your own. Uh, thank you for watching and have a great day.